do it. I'll, I'll kind of do an introduction and then we have to like say hello as if like an awkward hello <laughs> as, as if we as if we haven't just had been speaking for five minutes no no that's fine um, i'm gonna awkward hellos <laughs> okay let's go okay so this is don't touch the cat podcast um we are talking to ross cunningham um, ross has a tiling company called roscoe tiling in glasgow and he recently started the roscoe tiling academy um Ross got my attention initially on LinkedIn. He used to post a lot of work, as a lot of tilers do. But I used to look at Ross's, and this is before I even knew him. Um, so I was kind of stalking him, I would say. He interested me because he used to do his work and then make a video and explain the correct way, or, the, or the, what, what he would say is the correct way of doing whatever particular job he's just done. So that was always interesting to me because not everybody does that whether they don't want to or they're not willing to or they think they've got any secrets but then obviously very recently well not he started doing it a while back and he was building a tiling academy so i've kept my eye on it ever since and he's, he actually posted um progress pictures and things like that and it's actually open now and so it's a really good time to get him on so hi ross hi there how you doing very good very good um so if if we start um how long have, have you been tiling? Have you always been a tiler? I've been uh, 17 years now. I've been tiling longer than I've not. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, so so if you... Just tell us how you got to where you are today. So it was obviously a very experienced tiler and a tiling academy. Um, you start from wherever you want, mate. Whether it's um, left school yeah. or worked for whoever when you were younger... Just start from the yeah, beginning, mate. Take it from there. Aye, yeah, sure. So, basically, I kind of hit high school and I wanted to be an accountant, believe it or not. And kind of first and second year, you've got your head down, try to get your grades, but third and fourth, lost it all together. Um, grades went out the window and started doing some summer shifts with your uncle. So, in, in at your school, did they let you... What kind of... Is, it, is this a normal high school? Yeah, yeah, and so I, I wouldn't, have, I, I never even considered what to do at high school. But so you wanted to be an accountant, and your school had the correct classes to. Well, I kind of knew I had to focus on mathematics, English, that sort of thing, yeah, yeah, in order yeah. to go where I had to go. But um, aye, that was kind of what I wanted to head. But obviously, third and fourth year, you get carried away, you know, lose interest, and you end up spending more time with. Was it, your is it is it GCSEs? Was it GCSEs at the time? Uh, well, was I? I was, yep. Yeah. yeah, you're younger it's than curious. me, so I don't, I don't know why I asked that because you're <laughs> younger than me anyway. But I just wonder because I went to a high school in uh, Ireland, Scotland. Obviously, do the same as England, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it changes at the same time as well. God knows what it is now. But I so fourth year, third and fourth year, started spending summers working with, with my uncle. And at the end of the fourth year, done my exams, had two weeks off, and then just went to work with my uncle. So, within leaving school and then going to work, there was only two weeks. I think I was 15. <laughs> Started my apprenticeship in the August. So just your your uncle your uncle was a tiler? He was. He's kind of a bit of an all-rounder, but kind of builder, roofer, but tiling was his niche. That was what he was best at. And he kind of put me through my apprenticeship and got me on my way. Um, qualified to, yeah, was that, 2010, 20 years old, and was due a, a tradesman's wage, basically. And we kinda, we had that last recession, the last big one, and my uncle basically just put his hands up and was like, I can't afford to give you the wage. That you... What? This was 2008? Yep. You're quite young then. <laughs> You're a lot younger. Aye. Yeah, you're a lot younger than me. Say it to him. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. Karen. No, you're fine. So, obviously that recession hit and he was just honest and I started to put a couple of adverts and stuff like Gumtree and whatnot. Um, started getting a bit of my own work in it just kind of get carried away and I spent more time doing my own work than I did working with my uncle. So... 
fast forward, met some great people and so got a lot of experience. Your first job, so you did like a four-year apprenticeship? Yep, done, sat with my your apprenticeship, uncle. yep. What were your first jobs? What were you doing Wait, on your own, when you went um, on your own? Uh, small bathroom floors, kitchen splashbacks, the kind of the basics that, that you need for tiling. Did you know that that was the base? Were you looking for those jobs? Did you know that was the basics? I, I, I've had this uh, conversation with somebody else the other day. I don't think so. I think I know they're the basics now that I'm much further advanced. Like outside steps, done tons of them, and I wouldn't have touched them now. Like, yeah. Did, it's the, so were you were you just you so you put an advert out? I'm a Tyler, and just much. would you have just took any job that come your way? I absolutely. Like, I was kind of hungry at the same time and just wanted to make money and. That was the way to go, yeah. At that stage, what, what, if you're honest, what did you actually know after four years of an apprenticeship? What were you capable of? Um, steps and kitchen splashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> like my uncle was quite a hard tradesman to work with. Um, if you'd done something wrong, you took off, you didn't get a second shop, yeah. sort of thing. So, as much as hands on and stuff, it was quite limited. And obviously, in college, it's, they don't. They, you don't. What was the college deal. like? It was one a day laugh. a week. No, was it? it was. It was two weeks on, two weeks off oh. for two years. Um, so I got a skive every couple of weeks, basically. And in, in my opinion, just went to college, oh. had a laugh with some of the boys. So you got an apprentice wage, which are, uh, how much was it? If you don't mind at, me, at the, the the first year it was buttons. It was like one hundred and twenty pound a week. Yeah, that's all right. I got 40 quid a week when I was doing my apprentice. And I'm not that much older than you. But um, So who paid you that, your uncle? Yes, I believe you can get you get grants and stuff to kind of subsidise towards it. But And um, um, did he have to pay you when you were at college as well? Aye. So he did you a favour then? Aye, he did. Definitely. He, he, he knows that as well. Like he said that the... the at the start, the college kind of sell you the apprenticeship and say, oh, we'll back you up, support you, we'll do this and do that. And he says, it's not. He says, I ended up paying most and of it. Was the college just tiling? It was a school of building. So there was kind of a plastering level, there was a bricklayer's level, there was... Aye. Does it still a... exist? No. It's it's no shut down, it's just kind of moved into a bigger premises. It's Glasgow... Glasgow Metropolitan College now, I believe. Does that course still exist, you know? I think so. And I think they're still teaching the same thing they taught me 17 years ago. Yeah. And I bet, is it, how old was it when they were teaching at you? I bet. Couldn't even put a date yeah. on it. I same curriculum. Good 30, 40 years anyway. Yeah. We'll get on to that. That's your, that's your next venture, Aye. isn't it? So, you went from the, the, being an apprentice to take just doing jobs that that you could take that you were capable of I to, working at the back of my car in a car Little. to a point where this is where I started seeing your stuff you started doing really intricate stuff Little. how did that happen did, how did it, is this all pure experience I think so far. I think I'm um, Obviously, over the years, I've built a, a clientele, and it's kind of got me to this stage. Um, to actually, to being honest, in the last year, I rebranded because I wanted to attract a different clientele, and I think that's I'm pretty sure that's how I've ended up with the jobs that I've had recently. But like, just that's probably why you popped up on my radar, then, isn't it? Because I bet. So what what were you before? Just Ross tile, Ross Cunningham tiling, um, I, local RC advertising tiling services. And you got a lot of work in Glasgow. Yep. And then you rebranded as Rosco. Yep. Got yourself onto LinkedIn. I so I've been on LinkedIn for years. Um, at social media, I kind of hold myself back. I like, I like posting and stuff, but then you end up inundated with customers wanting work done, and that's not really why I used it. I get enough work the old-fashioned way, just by word of mouth. But yeah. Um, that's how I don't post much. But yeah. I kind of need to now. And you're, you, I know you're on TikTok now, but you were only really on LinkedIn, weren't you, before? Yeah, uh, Instagram. We've got a... Oh, Instagram, sorry. Yeah, yeah. on that as well. Yeah. So, so I always say to people, what, once they've done one good, and I speak to Tyler's all the time, and, and they'll, they'll say they've finished a job, and they'll send me the photos, but they don't want to share them online. 
Man. And they will have done something like, like you just said it, and I'll be like, that's a high-end job that you've just done. Yeah. All you need to do is post that work once. Yeah. And you'll be inundated with similar types of requests. Yeah. If that's what you want to do. I was speaking to someone the other day, actually, um, it just in an indoor swimming pool, and I was like, mate, you, is this the type of work that you would like this to do? Is... And he's like, yeah. I said, you need to post it online with some kind of proper, get some good photos, do a good write-up. And I, I look to people like you because you're not afraid to say, this is exactly how I did this. And people yeah. like that because it's like, I, I don't see, I get it, some people probably don't want to. But ah, you I can th- open yourself up for criticism that way. Um, yeah, or the shy, or I think a lot of the time they're worried about the criticism. Is. You're right, but I think sometimes the guys that are really good, they just don't want to tell people how they did it. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, um, I don't know why. Uh, you can I think I know what video you're speaking about. It's the kind of I called it the Starship Enterprise. Maybe that bathroom when I spoke through exactly where I started and. I can't remember. To be honest, mate, I've watched loads. Of you. When you started, I, I don't know when you started it, but when I started finding them, yeah. I was like, this, this is like an interesting guy. Yeah. Because there's not many people really do it like that, in my opinion, anyway. They'll, they'll, they'll post videos or do fancy TikTok videos. And, yeah, with some and music they, in them. And... Yeah, they're amazing. They're great. They get loads of views and you can't knock them. They're brilliant. But I, like, I just like the way you did it and that's why I started following you. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think it's obviously it's, it's quite a complicated thing when people look at a bathroom without its tile, they go, where did you start? How did you start? That sort of thing. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's where I got the idea from. Like, people see a tile bathroom and go, wow, that's amazing. But to actually say, I started with that tile over there. Yeah. That's it. it, run it. it. Yeah. It, someone like myself, I, I, I'm not a tiler, but I think I've got an eye. Like I can look at a, an installation and say, that's nice or that isn't. A good job. I think a lot of people, not especially not immediately, they might get the work done in the bathroom or whatever they've, whatever they've had done, it is. and they don't immediately notice if it's good or not because it just looks good. A lot. Do you know what I mean? A lot can yeah. be hidden, and then Aye. over a few weeks they're like, oh, it's the like nah, house. Just, yeah, exactly. You walk in, you go, this house is amazing. Then you bought it, you've moved in, go, oh, never seen that. Yeah, that shit. I've just noticed the the grout is a mess, or yep. that towel doesn't line up there. Yeah, I, I saw one of yours actually the day you went back to a job, and you posted the pictures and said, um, "I had made a mistake." There's a yeah. mistake, and I even when you 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 showed the mistakes, I couldn't I couldn't see it. Even <laughs> even when you were telling me where it was, so it's like, I, I, how has anybody even noticed that? Because it was making me go cross-eyed trying to find uh, the mistake. I know. I applauded the customers. I I couldn't even see that when I done it clearly, and then <laughs> yeah. it took them six months to find it. Like. Yeah. I couldn't see it when you pointed it out. That's how that's how <laughs> tight it was. That's unbelievable. So yeah. So where did we get to? You 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 um. So in those seventeen years, yeah. has it always been just you? Over the years, I've had several apprentices and tried to take on other titles and stuff, but. Um, the standard just isn't there. But the the young ones, they don't have the work ethic anymore. I'm sure there's some out there, but I've not been lucky enough to find any. Um, so now I can I just rely on other tilers that I'm confident in their work and just get them in for help as and when. So generally, work myself. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. I, I was speaking to somebody else who was having that problem. He's been through three or four apprentices. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, what is it. What what? I'm very forgiving I, with younguns, especially if if someone's under twenty five. Yeah, I cut them a lot of slack. Like, yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of slack because I think I wasn't sensible until I was about thirty. Yeah, I... and especially when I was really young, because I was an apprentice myself, and I my boss at the time. So I was an apprentice engineer, but my boss at the time could have easily easily let me go yeah. more than once and he cut me a lot of slack and when when people are young i always think like mm, yeah they, they might be 
been stupid or lazy or whatever as we we would accuse them of by it. Uh, I try and cut them loads of slack and give them as many chances as possible. Aye, um, my best step down this was probably my last my last uh, he's my wee cousin. So it was it was in the family, which is always a there's a red flags isn't it. <laughs> the rule is you don't work with family, but uh, in three years he was with me and he was getting to a stage where he was good. And he was all able to do his own job, so I was pushing him, get your driving license, come on, you're better, blah, blah, blah. And his attitude went the opposite way. He started sleeping in, um, just not caring. Oh, he, no. He even started smoking on the job. I'm like, what are you doing? You, just, you don't smoke? Oh, no. That. Then, that obviously. Did he, he maybe just lost interest then? I think so. Uh, it just so wasn't had, for him. Had to pull the plug on him and... Obviously. I what were you like that. as an apprentice, though? So, that, so, were you? I was pretty hard working, to be honest. Um, didn't drink much. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I kept it sensible. Yeah, I think I turned up to work and it hung over once, and the whole time I worked with my uncle. So I, I was. I liked my graft. Yeah. I like to just get my head down. And it's a tough one, and it's with with young guns because that, yeah. that's the same story that uh, I've, I've spoke to more than one person but the, the the person I've mentioned before he's had three or four he's the same he's like and in, in a way I respect it because even I would be a lot softer I know I would yeah. and it's probably the wrong thing to do but he's like no I, I can't piss about if I know that it's that they're not going to be right I just have to tell them straight away like very early on I and I, that's Thailand's such a sensitive, uh, I don't know, tr- I don't know if sensitive is the right word, but it requires a lot of detail a lot very soon and you still need to be quick at the same time. I've found it really hard to slow down enough to teach an apprentice on the job. Um, so you're just kind of relying on them to pick it up yeah. as you're doing it. What do you have to do? Start them as a labourer, basically? Pretty much, aye. I need to learn how to sweep up first. It's... And are those grants or whatever still available these days? That were available to your uncle. Eh, uh, I think so. But I think there's something, isn't there? But it's it's different now. Like, it's aye, they do subsidise half of their wage for six yeah. months, but you need to jump through hoops to get it. And Would you take up. on someone who was older? Because I know you can do that now as well, so it doesn't have to particularly be a young person. Aye, you, probably. What What's your thoughts on that? So this is a debate I've had with someone, eh, and an, no, an, an older person. Who, an older person, say someone over forty, even in the fifties. Yeah. Which isn't old. I'd, I'd, but, um, pro- I'd so probably find it hard personally, just because I don't know. I've all I've been growing up, brought up with a respect your elders sort of thing. So if yeah. You like? Do, you probably do, noticed do. that I've I've mentioned a few times that you're younger than me. I've got. I don't know what that is. I I had a boss once that was younger than me. I was like, fuck, he's younger than me. Yeah, yeah. And I was like thirty odd at the time. So that's. But it's nothing really. It's yeah. like. He just had more it's, experience than me in that particular industry and it moved moved on quick more quickly, but I think I've noticed it's natural for guys, especially in the construction industry industry, they don't like taking get I don't know, getting told what to do off somebody younger, so they I think there'd naturally be that clash. I don't think anybody does. Especially when they're quite young. Like if they're like late twenties, thirties and they're very senior and you're like yeah. really? <laughs> but no. it it can happen, they've just done well. But yes, yeah, so, if if you're taking an apprentice, would you prefer someone young, but but obviously they're going to come with all the things that most young people come with, um, yeah. inexperience and probably trying to skive a day off because they've been drinking the night before or whatever, or they've been on the street uh, at night on a Monday, or someone who's more experienced in life, they might have had a, a different... Um, career before they come to you i think uh, I, I think i go for the young one personally I, even I though agree, it, I, there's a bit of work in both of them i suppose but yeah the the, the experienced you're gonna get, you're person gonna get both ends of the scale <laughs> yeah the experienced person might they, i'm making i'm making assumptions here there's obviously lots of people who, who uh, right. would be brilliant but i'm thinking the experienced person might be a bit too experienced <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. expect more money and more responsibility. Well, naturally, they've got, they've got other responsibilities, yeah. don't they? They already they need to earn a certain amount of money before they even take a job. Yeah. And obviously, you'd expect them to come at a lesser wage because they need taught at the end of the day. 
Yeah. Whereas Tiling, I, tiling's not easy, man. I said this. I've said this all the time. It's it probably nah. it probably something that you could learn the very very basics of it, yeah. and then that's easy. And and even then, you only know like. I know how to use this adhesive, I know how to fit these tiles, I can cut a straight line. But as soon as you deviate from that, it becomes pretty difficult, pretty quick tiling does. Uh, like, I think I've uh, started tiling it quite a... I don't know, I don't know how to put it, but uh, quite a change. Like I was tiling with the kind of old school, and now I'm right up to the modern tiling. Uh, to start with, I was using folding cardboard as packers and stuff, and spacers, and... I've come all the way past that. It's just so totally different. When you when you move on from an, an older to a to a more modern way of working, like a modern is it, tool, is that literally just <clears throat> teaching yourself? Pretty much, I have can I've with I've pretty much taught myself everything. Um, what was the biggest jump for you in terms of product or tool or? Bit like from from cardboard to plastic spaces. That's obviously not that big a jump, but like, what's the biggest thing that you've jumped from this to this? So, even though it does the same thing. One of the main ones was probably going from a table saw to a handheld angle grinder. Uh, uh-huh. Working with working with my uncle, uncle, we cut everything through a table saw, a wet saw, basically. It's a table with a spinning blade and wall and whatnot. His opinion was grinders are for jakes. <laughs> yeah. For what? Uh, for Jake's. What's that? Tramps. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, says tra- tramps at the tiles or tramps that use grinders, but then the very next guy that I kind of spent some time with working and whatnot, he used an angle grinder and I just, I don't know, I loved it. You get so much freedom and you can. There's a bit of art so, in it. Absolutely. You can, like you say, it's a bit of art. You can do some more intricate stuff, you know, stuck to that table saw. Yeah, so as I've said probably... to you before, I think a lot of tilers, and it, it sounds silly, but I think it's absolutely true. The yeah, tilers that, that can do stuff like that, they they could easily, not even in another life, in this in this life, I've yeah. done I've done some kind of art easily. The the stuff yeah. that some of, some of the tilers are capable of, and they do it on the I've, fly. I've they don't draw for it. A couple of years, so they, that um. I'm not a tailor, I'm an artist. I've just kind of joked and laughed about that for the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, I think there's truth in it. Absolutely. Like, like you say, some guys out there, there's a guy from Glasgow who does, who just smashes up tiles and makes some mosaics. I can't remember his name, but he makes uh, world famous pictures um, for yeah, Gucci I've and seen stuff. It. And yeah. I forgot his name, but I know you're on yeah. about. Yeah, well, that that is actually, that would be considered art. Yeah, Even exactly. it, It's still tiling. So, so that guy would be considered an artist who uses tiles. I should where be, you're a tiler, a you're a tiler who has to convince people he's an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit hard, but yeah, so I've seen his stuff. It's amazing. That Gucci yeah. one it did the rounds quite a lot, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I don't blame him. It was, it was cool. David Arnott, that's his name. That's it. it. Yeah, I've spoken to him actually. On I've, I've right. chatted with him on. I tried to sell him some grout and he was like, nah. I was, like, I was trying to get him to use some luminous grout on one of his um, oh, really? projects. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I still I might one day. I don't think you'd be able to use the, the Perflex in that. No, I don't think it doesn't, doesn't suit it at all, does it? So <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to. Maybe you'd do mm-hmm. the border with it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, do you specialise in any specific area? Um. Probably, I don't know. That may be cocky saying this. All areas, like, I give every area the 110%. I've been fitting bathrooms as long as I've been tiling them. Like, the full works, the plumbing, the joinery, the plastering. Ah, right, okay, so so you do everything? Yeah, I've kind of le- eased off on it a wee bit in the last couple of years just to kind of push the push my tiling side of things. And So we're within tiling? Because I know a lot of people are trying to move on to be large format specialists now. Uh-huh. What's your experience with? I'm I'm talking huge large formats, not sixty by one. I'm talking massive. No, size. so no, no. Recently, I've kind of I've fit, I've done a few jobs now with two point four by one point twos. Um, 
I do enjoy it. Like at the start, it was it's nerve wracking. It's soul destroying. Just scared because that's how'd you learn it? Because it's not normal tiling at all. Nah, I don't, you just have to use your experience, I suppose. How did you do uh, your first one of them? Knowing that the tile, that tile costs 800 quid a tile or whatever it costs. I was fortunate that I got to do a showroom in Gifnook. Right. In Wilson Bathrooms. Um, so it wasn't a customer's house. There was a bit of space. There was a bit of... I don't know. I just, I had the space and the time to get, get my head around it and get it done sort of thing so that was where i done my practicing so to speak broke one which was horrifying but <laughs> what happens when you break one who's vaulted who's who covers it um me so is, is that not i don't know i've never really asked anybody this but so is it when the tilers are fitting those huge tiles it's on you if you break one it's on the tiler definitely um it just obviously depends if sometimes those tiles can take a knock before they're delivered but you will you don't know um so you just automatically assume it's whatever you've done it could be lifted wrong once you drill a hole in it it becomes pretty fragile so you don't specifically want to specialize in those massive tiles do you know what i enjoy it it's it's a bit of a slower pace um you is take it, a is lot it better, more time. Is it better paid? Overall? I know, I know it's like you charge more, but you have to do more as well. I think so, I um, Definitely. Pays more than... Like, I know there's guys out there who are out tiling full bathrooms in a day. So they're, they're doing, what, five bathrooms a week, which is madness. Yeah, I couldn't even fathom tiling a bathroom in one day. What do you think it's, of those adverts that you see on Facebook that say they'll they'll do your bathroom for three grand? All in. Ah, uh, they're cutting corners. They do it. They're, they're, they, do, they get plenty of work. I know that. I know people just, who've, who've had them. Uh, but and then you get somebody better than a year later. Yeah. <laughs> to do it properly. Yeah, I spoke to him and like they're not. They don't even tile anything. Do they? they put all the the, um, the wet wall up? And yeah. I've seen some proper horror stories from companies like that. I'm sure. There's ones out there who do do a good job, but you don't hear about those ones. You well, they just sub it, they sub everything out, so it's hit and miss. If if you get, they might sub it out, and the, and, the, and the customer might get you, for example, and you do a good job, or yeah. they might get me, who's pretending to be a, a bathroom fitter <laughs> for the week, so I can make some money, and it's and that's literally what can happen. Yeah, I, I guess they vet them and and stop using them if they're not very good, but you might be the the unlucky one that gets the not very good guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Because at the start, I kind of I done that some subbies for bigger companies, and like you say, it was me you got. So you definitely got a better job. Yeah, you could. You get. You can either get someone who cares or someone who wants a Doesn't... grand, or no. for a week or whatever. It's. Yeah, uh, they've got a, a first gear policy, as they say. Pot luck in it. Yeah. So yep. you don't. You don't plan or you don't want to specifically specialise in any kind of tiling? No, nothing specific as would such. You, would you take on bigger things to project manage yourself, knowing that you can do all the the other bits as well? I think I'd, I'm more, I feel like I'm more of a worker, I like to be hands on as opposed to project managing I like to be in it and um, telling people what to do and how it's done yeah. Maybe it doesn't suit me, so to speak. Being the boss? Yeah, I, I prefer. I think it would. <laughs> do you know why? Because you do the academy. Then you'd be good. Do, you'd be a good boss. Good bosses don't necessarily just tell people what to do, they, they teach people. Yeah. So it's, it's different when those people who come in the academy, they're paying to be taught, so they're there to. Eh? Listen, basically, they're, they've invested their money, so they're there to hear what yeah. I've got to say. Whereas, like you say, the, the young ones, you're paying them, and they don't really care at the end of, <laughs> end of the day. <laughs> well, I bet it's I bet it's if you kept if if you if you persevered, I think you'd drop on eventually. Yeah, yeah. And, and I yeah. think somebody, a, somebody, a, a young person, or even an older person, they'd probably really appreciate 
you being there, boss. I look guarantee at some, you that. I look at some tech companies, I'm like, how did you manage to get a team? Well, I've been doing this for years and... <laughs> Still it's a funny fibbling. thing. It's a funny thing, and it's hard because I see it. Um, people who run companies, who, and they might have like not even entirely necessarily, they might have like yeah. thirty or forty people working for them. And sometimes you speak to them, and they're quite chaotic, and they're like, "How do you how, how do you manage to run a business? Like, how have you managed to pull this together?" And I think a lot of it is they don't really care that much, like. Where yeah. If it was me, if it was me, I'll use me as an example. I'd probably care a bit too much and waste too much time on nitty gritty and things that don't really matter and not be direct enough and say, right, go and do that. And, and the, the people that I speak to sometimes at the top of the at the top of the chain of these like medium sized um, contracting businesses, yeah, they're just like they rarely know what's going on. They'll go to a meeting, quote prices where they're, they're not quite sure if that's correct price or not and it's like that <laughs> they're a lot more chaotic and, and it's it pays off for them um, to be like uh, not waste too much time worrying about the little things I suppose yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one I would, I'm, I just would care too much and want to speak to every customer individually and deal with a lot of things instead <laughs> of just kind of and get the job done get away yeah exactly we'll deal with the snags later sort of thing we'll move on to the next one first yeah that there's a bit to be admired in those type of people though because they, they get they get a lot done quickly and they manage however many people I look you can it's just see. different types of people isn't it so I'm, I'm sure um, there's lots of examples of inspiring bosses who actually care and yeah well, yeah I'm just I just use an example of I was thinking of someone specifically that's why I use that as an example mm. no, it's, yeah. it's, it's more cost effective to kind of move on to the next job and catch the snags layer whereas I'd be like I'd want to leave the job perfect first and then move on to the next one and it's just yeah. not cost efficient yeah I suppose and you'd be involved in doing the actual job as well though where the the, the people that I'm talking about wouldn't they would just send people yeah. and then worry about everything later and I'm like uh, you, if I was actually involved in the, in the actual job I, I, I'll use me as an example again I applied some grout for somebody, and I knew it it, it had sunk into like an epoxy grout. I knew a little bit had sunk in a corner into a void. I couldn't sleep, and so I was saying, "Do you want me to come back and like fix that?" And they're like, "Don't worry about it." I was like, "Oh, it made me think like, how do I couldn't be a Tyler for that reason? Because I'd be like, fuck, I've I've had my face has been two or three feet away from the tiles for the last eight hours." I know yeah, every yeah, yeah. single little problem, and it, and it'll bug me. Well, maybe you'd be a good Tyler, because you wouldn't leave any problems. <laughs> no, I'd be I'd be terrible because I'd be slow. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep at night. I would all slow at the start, that's for sure. <laughs> so, but yeah, then you get the cowboys who like and this is what I mean. I like, how, how how do those people operate? To they know they've left a mess. Mm. Aye, how but, do they sleep but they're night? okay with it yeah how do they sleep yeah. I, just, I don't know yeah, how, I don't know how that happens yeah it's crazy I, I couldn't so so yeah so tell us about the academy then so so you moved on from um, well you're not moved on from it you're doing two things at the same time still I presume. doing both yeah. yeah so you did 17 years apprentice Tyler yep learned everything more or less experience wise by yourself with minimal training yeah. Um, did you do much training with the manufacturers? So, Porcelain Rosa, when I first started with the X Stone stuff, Porcelain Rosa sent a guy up. He kind of talked you through the do's and don'ts and that sort of thing, but he still kind of helped you fit it. So, he's basically still kind of prepared you how to use the product. And even some of the do's and don'ts, you see other tailors and they do the don'ts if that makes sense you will tell them not to cut it a certain way and not to cut C shapes out of them but that's just is yeah. it still possible if you... I think social media is getting people better at tiling absolutely because... I've said that for since in the last year yeah. Yeah, the bar. Past, yeah, I would say that as well the past couple of years because it, I think there was always a lot of good tilers knocking around yeah. But like one person would be good with a, a grinder. Somebody else could do mitering and they had yeah, a yeah. trick that maybe only a few other people knew. 
somebody else has really got and what's happening is they're posting videos and then somebody like yourself for example would see a video by someone else who's really good at using large formats or whatever and you would see them do something and go oh shit yeah i I'm never actually thought thing. about doing yeah. it that way so and you're capable of doing it you don't really need to be shown now mm -hmm. you've seen it because you've kind of got the experience uh, of using those types of tiles anyway you're like oh yeah i'll do that next time and yeah. I, yeah genuinely think just by watching videos people have got better just ju just by visualizing themselves doing it yeah they, instagram's they, brought like a world of knowledge to in a small space where you get access yeah. to it all the time yeah and like, it, it kind of got ruined i think by the shorts because that i think tiktok came along because instagram and youtube yeah were like long form even and long form i mean like fucking two minutes that's long form now <laughs> but then then um tiktok came about and it's like 10 seconds 15 seconds and then it was literally if your video is longer than 20 seconds it, it's kind of going back a little bit now i think because TikTok have started letting people load longer videos. I ain't got same of video now. For a while there, it was like, if your video's shorter than 20 se longer than 20 seconds, nobody will see it because it doesn't show it to anybody. The algorithm yeah. says, nope, nobody will watch it because it's too long. Too long. There needs to be short clips and a good music. And... Yeah. And even that annoys people now because like, oh, why, why do you put music on all your videos? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. get that quite a lot. I'm like, well, I don't know actually because everyone else does it's like the music's there to to easy quite easy to choose the music but they're right yeah. why does everyone put music like why is everyone making fucking music videos <laughs> like, <what's, laughs> it's a it's a tutorial how to use grout it's like yeah, no. it doesn't need a um what they With call the latest, it latest BTS. Track along the back, is it bts yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. so I mean. my biggest my biggest most viewed video ever was a 15 second video of someone peeling some grout off a tile and it, i could never replicate it and then it took me a while to click in it was just because it had a bts i didn't even know it was bts but it it, <laughs> it is bts into i'm getting it right yeah 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 it, it, it had a pop band. yeah it had a bts song on it and i and i was showing um my wife and my little boy was like it's bts i was like what and then i was like oh yeah that i, I know now that's why everyone's that's why it's 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 not my video that's get the algorithm doesn't like my video it likes that it song likes the song yeah, and because it's short people have watched it because it's so short they're not, they're not watching it because they want to it's just there and it's short and it's got that song yeah. on it so yeah i suppose that's got a lot to do with it as well and people like your videos because they like this they like the song as well so it's nowadays it's become important what song do you pick with your video and is it, it miles instead yeah. of the content of the video yeah it makes no sense to me sometimes. I've tried to be clever, and you try, yeah. and you've said like, mm, "This will, this is clever, and this will work," and then it gets like nine views, and then you just put something on randomly that you've made no effort on, and it'll get like twenty-five thousand views. Yeah, I seem to have to me no... just recently with yeah. TikTok, yeah, and the, I was just showing off one of the students the Tartan, in the academy, the Tartan Tyler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It but showed up and I was like, I didn't even know it was you. I was like, ah, oh, the Tartan Tyler. Oh, he's got a kilt on. Oh, fuck, it's Ross. <laughs> you uh, knew that face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So have you have you been doing all right on TikTok, with views-wise? I, uh, I, I thought I was starting to notice a pattern. It was like two videos with kind of shit views. Then you'd get one with 20-odd thousands. Then a couple of shit ones. And then another 20-odd thousands. So. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think they reward you for using the app. So if you Probably, use, yeah. if you use the app and flick through, I'm, I, this is probably total bollocks. But I think because I didn't use it for ages, and then I'd upload a video and it wouldn't get many views, and then I, I start. It's so fucking addictive. It's really annoying because if you do start flicking through TikTok, it can right. you can waste an hour easily. Easily, yeah, you can go deep and yeah. I, but there is there's, there's loads of good stuff it's weird because there is there's good stuff on there yeah, there is good it's like i've been watching this guy <laughs> i forgot i forgot what he's called but he's like um he's got like a a, a webcam in his car and he just drives around london <laughs> and he's what's he called something zen something zen it's worth watching yeah. and it's just like really relaxing to watch because it's like 
it, it's chilled, but he's funny as well. And he talks with a calm voice, and he's like, "Oh yeah, look at this guy. He's, uh, he's giving me the double wave." <laughs> it's like, and, and then and then you read you read the comments, and people are like, "This has made me a better driver." And I'm like, "Shit, it, 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 it's, it's right because he's been yeah. so courteous to people, and he's got no. gotten, he's got millions of views, and it's really good." But then you can it's... scroll through easily an hour or two so and I, yeah. but then once I, I started doing that and and like i've tried not i try not to because it's just fucking annoying but um that's when i think tiktok started letting my videos be seen more i'm sure of it oh and you're because i was actually more. using tiktok right it might just be a coincidence i don't know nah, i don't get it well then was the algorithm changes all the time yeah there's an argument that none of us should actually be using tiktok Right. Yeah. Just so, it's just there to spy on everybody, you know. Ah, oh, that's true. I've, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Get the locations at all. Well, and it, and it, it, I, I've heard that um, the stuff that we see isn't the same as what um, they would show to people in China, for example. It'd be very educational in China, but it's turning it? yeah. it's turning all our brains into fucking mushy peas. <laughs> Apparently, that's just what I heard. You it's entertaining, five, anyway. I'll give it that. Yeah, you get ten shit videos to one entertaining one. Some yeah. of them are really good, yeah. Like I said, yeah. that, that I forgot what he's called. I wish I could remember his name so I could say it. Something, yeah. something Zen drives around London with a, with his webcam. Just people so, watching him. Yeah, and, and talking. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> so yeah, the the academy then. So what 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 drove you to say right? I'm going to start an academy. Um, it was it happened pretty quickly to be honest. This was only kind of January, February. Uh, my wife says to us, she's like, "Why don't you want my academy?" Because previously, before the whole lockdown carry on, we would try to open a bathroom showroom, right, and just hit a number of a number of hurdles. Um, people with more the uh, bigger shops, bigger brands, and stuff were getting the unit before us. So, yeah. like, can it, I, so was that just before? Just or, before, lo- aye, just before lockdown. Can you I dodged see? the bullet then, didn't you? Think so. Aye, it looks like it kind of went in our favour if we did get a unit in that time, and then the yeah. doors get shut straight away. It'd have been yeah. You would have been a new business, so you would have had zero support from the government. Yep. Yeah. You've been able to open your doors. Nightmare. So yeah, you dodged a bullet, mate. Definitely. So obviously. Fast forward a few years and my wife just said to me in January, why don't you do a training centre? And kind of thought about it, hummed and hawed. I'm not much a risk taker, so I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Need to get a unit, that's another outlay. And, um, just put the wheels in motion. She's obviously, she's good with a computer and stuff, so she helped with the cash flow. I got all the information that needed to be in it. And that was come... April, I had the premises. Is this last year? This That's year. This year. Wow. Yeah. So within sixty-eight months, I'm now training people. Yeah. Um, so that that place that you got, what is it? Because it looks big. A uh, two thousand square foot unit. I did the same to you. That me at the start, I was like uh, looking at units, just like you with the house and two thousand square foot, five thousand eight hundred and sixty. I did not know what it meant. Didn't have any <laughs> idea what that size was. Um, just got a two thousand square foot one because I thought, okay, that sounds all right. <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah, uh, I'll see put, what I can fit in here. Yeah, put a little cafe in the back. <clears throat> yeah. It looks, um, it, what it does look is, and it's 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 like a, I've I saw it when it was empty, and then I saw you when you were decking it out. It looks <laughs> an expensive thing to set up. It was, um, like even the build itself, from paper to the actual build, is three times more than what I plan to spend. Yeah. So, I had to take money from other pots. Like I'd set aside this amount for tools, that amount. I say pots. It was all coming for the <laughs> one pot. <laughs> but I'd split. I'd obviously had a sum of money and I'd split it up for each thing that I needed to each area tools and whatnot, advertising and just kind of had to dip into each bit to get the build properly because you can write it down 
but then until you're actually in and building it, you get a better feel for what you need and how you want to do it. Yeah. Did, is there anybody else doing anything similar in the area, other than the college that you mentioned earlier? In the area? No. Um, the closest Thailand school is Edinburgh. Uh, but they teach the same method that I learned 17 years ago. Yeah. Um, the same as a lot of schools across Britain, which is what I'm keeping away from. Yeah. Because it, it didn't ben- personally it didn't benefit me at all. There was so, nothing that I could so, take from that. So the only, the only starting, the only reference that you had was what you did at college, and you knew that you didn't want to do that. Yeah. Exactly yeah, the I, same. So th- like I, I know what I learned with my uncle, and I know what I learned at college, and the stuff at college just didn't transfer into real life at all. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. That's one thing that I noticed on your videos. Um, you um, you actually make out like um, we're going to start using these tiles that you actually use in the real world and we're going to use real world examples. And that's why I say the base that you've built, they look expensive because if you see college ones, they're, they're usually just like a board with tiles on. Yeah. Where you're building bathrooms. Basically, like I've, obviously, like I say, I've been fitting bathrooms as long as I've been tiling, so yeah. I've got an idea of what your most common bathroom layout is, and that's what I went for in my base. Yeah. Like, there's no, I don't think there's a single tiling college in Britain that has baths in the base. Yeah. Why not? It's the fucking bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Is but, all that, where do you get all that equipment? Not equipment, but um, tiles and things. Where do you get it from? Do you have to buy it all? So the suppliers have been pretty generous, I think. I've helped them in the sense that they've had piles of um, outdated tiles that they were never going to sell and I've cleared their yard, basically. They said, oh, you take them, here's three tiles. Um, That's good, then. We, we're never going to sell them, they're discontinued. So I've probably helped them clear space. They've helped me by giving me tiles to learn with. Yeah, so you've used your, your 17 years of experience and connections. Yep. Come in handy there. Aye, and I've made a lot more. And is connections this just as you well. as well? Is this just you again? Uh, speaking to these people and no, the the academy. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just you running. So you've got your own tiling business. This is. And the academy. Yep. And it's just you. Aye, pretty much. I try. I do when I'm not in the academy. I'm doing my jobs, and it's just recently I found out how difficult that is when a job runs on and you. Yeah, you've no got shit. A <laughs> we've got a course starting on the Monday. <laughs> yeah. nah, I need this job finished. I've got people to teach on Monday, and it's yeah. I, I ended up working all weekend there. You need to get you. You need to employ someone who just finishes the course. <laughs> you teach them, Aye. teach them really well, and then say, "Guess what? I've got some work for you." Aye. Send you start, off. You start Monday. <laughs> yeah. So, how many people are on the course now? Is this the first wave that's going through it now? This is the second. I've done a course already. Um, what does your fo- sorry? What what does your course? When you say a course, uh-huh. so you've got a written course. So, that- yeah. So the, it's a beginner course that lasts two weeks, Monday, Friday, half eight to half four. Within that course, you will spend an after a morning in the classroom where we go over product knowledge, uh, preparation tools you'll be using. Just kind of all the, all the, like, the stuff that you need to see in black and white and talk over health and safety, all that carry on. And then we get out into the workspace, into your base, and that's where they'll learn how to set out a bathroom, tile a bathroom. And then there's also kitchen bays on the other side. They'll learn how to set out one of them, tile them as well. Using, like, a, like you said, normal tiles. A 600 by 300, they'll do it in grid pattern, they'll do it in brick bond, and they'll also get a, a shot at fitting a slightly larger tile, like a, a metre by 300. I saw one of your guys doing a niche with hexagons. Yep. Aye. He's Not actually bad. doing... He's actually doing quite well. Not bad for a beginner. I don't think you'd do that at college, would you? No. <laughs> no. We I don't think tight. a lot of tilers would even attempt that, <laughs> Just small square tiles, that's how you get in college. Yeah, niche, niche with, with hexagons on a for a brand new guy. It's pretty pretty impressive. 
Yeah, he's he's a, his attention to detail was good, and he was pretty quick as well for just starting. Um, so what kind of what kind of people decent. are you getting? What age groups and backgrounds? By a mix. Um, most of them seem to be looking for a career change. Some people are just looking to kind of have a side hustle, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Tiling as a side hustle. Aye, so <laughs> I know. Normally like, selling stuff on eBay. I know. Uh, he's, I think, with his work, he has a few days off at any given time, so he's got that time there to do other jobs. Yeah, so you were going to tell me how many people were on the course, and then I interrupted you. No, it's I think the first course there was only there was only two folk. Like, my course only holds six people. I'm keeping them small for a reason, so everybody gets their attention. Uh, this course has three people, and the next course has four people on already. So it's it's building momentum, which I'm happy about. The so both of these waves were beginners. Because yes. you, you do something else as well, don't you? I've got an advanced course. There's one of them starting at the end of the end of this month, end of November, sorry, which is for tiles to upskill. Because obviously, it's herringbone and wet rooms and stuff. It's quite an expensive thing to have a shot at and cut some of my customers' house. Yeah. So I think you see that a lot as well. So a, a lot of tilers that I speak to, they want to try something, but they never get the opportunity. That, and there's nowhere to learn it. They need, and they're always waiting for the right job exactly, to do the, yeah, to do this thing that they want to try out, whatever yeah. it is, mitering or herringbone or whatever. And they never get the opportunity. And like two years can pass, and they're still waiting for the right job that, that yeah. will let them try out this thing. So that's really good that there's another course there for for people who are already actually tilers just to learn a new a new thing. Yeah, I think there's a bit of, there might be a bit of bravado though. Um, I'm not going to learn something in a course. I know how to tile sort of thing. And yeah. where are, where are you going to learn it if you're not going to get taught it? Yeah, no, exactly. It's not going to happen, is it? No. It's just... learned badly in somebody's house. Yeah, I mentioned it last week to another another person on the podcast. It's like, where do tilers get to learn anything? Where's the yeah. where do they learn? It's all experience and trying it for themselves. So yeah, I, absolutely. An environment where, and we were talking about something that Schluter, I Actually, it's a good point. You went to Schluter last week, didn't you? I did. So I've never had a chance to even post about it or anything. Just yeah. straight back into work. And I think we were just talking about how, how good that is and how good it is that manufacturers do things like that. Listen. But if you're doing a, like a two-week version of that and, and more, yep. why, why wouldn't you do it? It, that, aye, is a, that is the place to learn because you can make a load of mistakes, it doesn't matter. I absolutely, the way my bays are set up, they're, they're set up for you to make mistakes as well, so that I'm there to go over it, correct you, and you've experienced that mistake, so you're not going to make it again in the real world. Yeah. They're, they're not made in a perfect situation with Well, that's walls. experience, isn't it? When, when, when you say ex- experience counts and experience matters, it is. it's experience because you've made those mistakes. Exactly. If, if you hadn't made those mistakes, you haven't got that experience. Yeah. And if, if you can gain that experience by making all, all those mistakes in a short time, yeah. then it's going to good set you in good stead straight away. Yeah, just get, it's getting the hours in, isn't it? You get, yep. you get two weeks at your place. Or I don't know how long the, the advanced course is, but however long That's it is. That's just a week. You get a load of hours in doing something that you've always wanted to do or try. Whereas as if you did it on site, you might get half a day here and there to, to try it and and if you did it wrong you'd be like shit I'm going to have to do it the other way now because I can't do that again and then you haven't learned anything because you, you didn't actually finish it yeah I, I, it's good to have somebody who's done it made a couple of mistakes and they're able to gauge you where to start yeah so that's your do you call it a curriculum or just like uh, a I have no, I've not really called it in, to be honest. <laughs> so I and curriculum it, will do it for me. It's good that you did it, that you sat down and said, right, this is the course. So it, I guess it's, I guess it's ever changing as well, isn't it? With, so you, you see what people responded to and what worked well. And I, and Absolutely. I, it's just a, a never ending, like you said, never ending change. It's just, it's constant. There's so many factors with Thailand. 
that you just can't possibly fit them all into a, a training exercise. All you can do is explain the most common ones that you're going to come across. Yeah. And the rest is they'll need to find by themselves, unfortunately. Yeah. We do offer a lot of support afterwards. Um, we're going to create a, a platform where the trainees can all talk to each other. There'll be other experienced tylers in there, so it's not just me ask, answering the questions. Yeah. So I'm trying to make sure they have that support when they're trying to grow as a tyler. Yeah, and, and I guess they'll all be kind of local as well. Yep. So if you if you create like something that where they can chat, but also if you if you create a group of tylers who are all fairly local to each other, yep, they can easily just go and help each other out. Absolutely, like I physically. That's a good idea. But we're even already getting people travelling. There's a boy from Newcastle up just now. That was that is... was going to be a question actually. If I wasn't from your area, uh, Newcastle's close enough, I suppose. Yeah, it's a couple of hours. It's still a it's still a fair drive, but if I was like I'm in Stoke, if I'm in Stoke, and I'm not sure there are, there are many, if any, courses like yours. So I get uh, wind of your course, and I'm like, shit, I'd I'd like to do that course. Yeah. How does it happen? Is, right is it now. possible? Yeah. So right right now it's impossible. Right, right now, uh, you'd have to travel up and stay here. And Is there any po this is a ridiculous question to ask a guest, but is there any possibility of doing anything remotely? Is there anything about your curriculum and, and what you do? Can you do any videos or personally nah, Thailand's hands on all day. Um I think it has to be hands on. Absolutely. There's a somebody out there who does stuff on YouTube. Um Don't say his name. No. <laughs> <laughs> He had quite a successful training school, and he's moved via to YouTube. No, no, he had oh. a proper training school, okay. um, and he's—I'm pretty sure he's shut it down. So I've been told, and he's now moved to online courses, which I don't agree with. It's, it's Thailand's hands-on. You can't teach that over a video. Yeah, uh, videos are great. Like we were saying before, they're brilliant, but usually for someone who already knows what they're doing, because they can say, "Oh, yeah." Uh, I thought about that, doing it that yep. way. I'll do it that way tomorrow. But they already know what they're doing. Right. And you, um, if you're teaching people, look, I can't, I can't show you every single thing that's going to go wrong or every single mistake that you're going to make. But what I can yeah. show you is physically, this is like the, the, the basics and the fundamentals of a bathroom, a kitchen, or floor, or seat, whatever you do. When something does go wrong, even though you may not have actually ever gone through that specific mistake or problem with it, they can't. They kind of understand because they, they've been taught. I like you just said there that I, I'm, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm teaching them the basics that I started my career with. So if I can get to here with what I started with, then you absolutely can as well. Yeah. So, I, I, do you know any other academy like? I don't even know what they call them. Other than colleges, are there, do you know any other academies? Do you know? Are you linked up with anybody that actually does something similar to you, but in another part of the country? Linked up? No, I know all of them, um, and they obviously I think they've heard about me through the grapevine now. Yeah. Uh, when I was at Schluter, Andrew oh, actually yeah. said, Andrew actually said to me, he says there's one other training school that's like yours. Um, had the same idea basically they're t teaching tiling with larger tiles like normal tiles it says apart from that I don't think there's any but yeah. this was I can't remember who said it was it was Newbury or something I could have just made that up but it was England somewhere you should get in touch with him like, I, th I've, I discussed this with you the other day um, if there's more people like that who are, who are willing to do a proper course rather than Try not to disparage the other courses because they obviously do something. They've been around for however long and they do teach people stuff. But there's, you're not the only person I've spoken to who doesn't really rate those courses that highly because they're yeah. like, look, they're giving people false hope. Mm -hmm. but I, did, I did another podcast with somebody else and he was like, they come away from those courses and they may have like committed all the redundancy money mm -hmm. to a new career. And they come away from that course thinking or hoping that 
they they want they know something and, and, and you really kidding. don't. Aye, because obviously I, I had my uncle for four years to kind yeah. of show me the ropes. Whereas these, like you say, these people are using savings. They're hoping a complete career change, and they're doing a course with almost zero transferable skills. Yeah. Yes, you should partner up. You should get in touch with that other person or that other company mm. and get like a share share curriculums or I don't know, co- share yeah, courses I... and, and say, look, let's do this, and then just get together and start just... building an actual curriculum that other people can follow. Yeah, all the courses can follow, and then yeah, I... it's, it's, colleges. It maybe co- sounds crazy, but I'm trying to make like. In the future, I'd like to make raw school a proper certification. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, you get together with the other guy or or whoever it is that runs it, uh-huh. the other company, start building a, a proper to say right. This is it. This this is the the gold standard that we yeah. believe for for Thailand academies, and you build that um, certification certification. And then you can actually say to other other train trainers, you can train the trainers at your place. Yeah. And then give them the Roscoe Gold Standard approved, and it might have been in Stoke. Yeah. I that's definitely like the the whole a risk a Roscoe certification is definitely something I'm pushing towards. I like that. That'll keep me. You drop. should do it. You right. should you, get, get, just do it. I'm sure I'm, you've got your own. I've I've seen the certificates, but you can get in touch with um, other colleges and say, "Listen, do you want my curriculum? Do you want my? Yeah. Do you want what I? Because I strongly believe it's better than what you're doing." Yeah. I... And they might say, "No, you're wrong." <laughs> <laughs> okay, next college. <laughs> But uh, no, that's, I'm getting a lot of that. It, it can get um, bigger. I'm sure it can because it's such a good idea. Aye. It'd be a shame to to keep it just in Glasgow. I'm getting a lot of. Uh, we've been doing this for so many years. We've had so many people through the door and blah blah blah. But you and, and you've talked to people and you think you're doing you're changing things. Uh, I don't think I'm changing things. I plan to. Um, exactly. I'm not saying I've changed everything as soon as I've opened my doors. Like, yeah. This is a this is a long game. You get that though. You you yeah, get people I... who just they're just begrudging because you're doing something different to what they've done and that they wish they did it basically. Uh, but they didn't. So fuck them. Yeah, I, if it's no world don't fix it, but it's definitely outdated. <laughs> yeah, it'll change, and I, hopefully you and whoever else you you can't do it all yourself, mate. You can kill yourself. <laughs> you, you need <laughs> get some people working for you. Jesus. Yeah. The, um, so, if I was a new Tyler, yeah. other other than coming to your course, not possible for me to come to your course. I live too far away. What's the most important thing that I should know or I should do? As and I know nothing. I've got a little bit of money to buy some tools, and that's mm-hmm. it. Hey, take your time. Well, if you're if you're doing a job, would you would you pay the person would would you pay for the standard that you're leaving? Because if the answer's no, then why are you leaving it? Yeah. <laughs> you should tell that to a to a few actual <laughs> ex- experienced it's, people. It's something I say a lot in my academy. Like those guys out there making a good living and they're leaving a shit standard. Yeah, I think it goes for 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 any job and anything that you want to do. Um, you've got to be prepared that it's going to take you a lot longer than you probably yeah. thought it would. You're going to make a lot less money than you thought you would at, at the beginning. Yeah, and you've there's got. A, there's a small business bit in the 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 two week beginner course, and that's why I explain. Here's what you here's what the going rates are, like roughly, and. You shouldn't expect to get that straight away. You should definitely be a bit cheaper until you find your feet because you're going to take longer. Yeah. Yeah. That's like I say, that goes with anything. I've had experience of the same thing. you got to be prepared. If if you're planning on doing anything as a new career, 
try and plan so you've got a few months or a year or even longer where you can earn less money than probably what you used to. Yeah. While you get your get your um, while you find your feet, and then you can, and then when you've got some experience, you, that's when it it all starts clicking together, and you can start making money again. Yeah, that is the danger, obviously, that people come off the course and take on work that's too difficult for them, and th th at that point, that's out of my control. Um, I've taught them a certain standard in the academy. It's up to them to then carry that outside if they if they decide to cut corners then it's out of my control but it wouldn't be the way I've taught them yeah well yeah it's pride in it yeah it's a shame that there is no actual um recognized body is the to say I'm a member of this body therefore I must be good at whatever we should you can be part of the TTA but that's I think they came out and vet a couple of jobs before you can be a member. But I don't think, I'm not sure how much it actually takes to... To get actually... references, I know that, because I get a few of them. Do you? Aye. Yeah, I, so... I don't know what sort of stature that gives you, because I know a few people in the TTA. Um, unlike like Australian stuff, that, like you say, there's proper governing bodies that you need to be certified to do bathrooms, and they check it, and it's like... So a national, a they national come standard. on site and check it like they would do with, I don't know, if you had, if you had a rewire. The building control and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. it needs to be. Really? So they come yeah. out and check the tiling to say, this is approved? The, the bathroom as a whole, no specifically tiling, but okay. it needs to be a certain grade and waterproofed. And wow. That, I think that needs to be introduced over here. Yeah. Make bathrooms even more expensive. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 right though, isn't it? Because why not? Why doesn't that exist? Um, because there's some shockers, and I've seen them personally. I can't believe people do some of the stuff that they do and get away with it. Yeah, no. And, and then they get paid, and then leave the customer with a nightmare. I've, I've got a friend who's a plumber. He sent me some images a couple of weeks ago of a waste pipe from a toilet, and the shower tree had been cut into it. And then the toilet was plumbed in, so you've got this massive notch cut out of the, the, the waste pipe, and you can imagine what was leaking out of there. See, why would anybody even do that? It's crazy. Someone who isn't even a, a tradesman or tradeswoman knows not to do that. Yeah. So, like, what are they doing? It's literally just to get it down and get it yeah. in, so it looks okay, and then they can yeah. leave. Box but it they've in, left somebody with... Like, hot, like literally a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Without, I don't know how people can do it, honestly. Nah. They're just evil people, robbing bastards. They <laughs> are, though, aren't they? Aye. Aye, it's just the, the only way you can, can uh, call them. Cool. So, within the industry... There's this. So my biggest bugbear within the industry is actually social media and when people are horrible to other people on social media when they post the work when actually it's a good opportunity to help people out i look social what? media's i don't know is also, also almost seems to be cool to kind of walk off jobs and highlight problems these days i've noticed that with tyler's a lot it's they kind of just go into a job where we are soon deal with it within themselves, they need to share it, they need to talk about the other joiner and run them through the, the muck and yeah. just fucking, I don't just like fucking it. fix it. I don't like it. Well yeah, you get you get that, um, why don't you just deal with it? Because I, I guess trades of all kinds, they, they they run into shit all the time and they just deal with it. Yeah, I've but, always said there's problem solvers and then there's problem finders. Yeah, but especially in a trade where it's like... Um, where um, anything can happen, basically. So if, if you're not the kind of person who's like, um, can think on your feet, um, you're struggling. Yeah, I, I, you definitely a, a degree of initiative Yeah. to deal with a few things. Yeah, so my thing with social media is so someone will post the work, and they're, maybe they're, they're actually proud of what they've done, Aye. but then immediately someone will be like, laughing at them or 
look at this bit off. Yeah, he's like, why would you even do that? I know. Like, it's just like ridiculous. Yeah. And mean. Hey, tic TikTok seems to be the worst for that. I've not had any issues until I had started TikTok. Really? Aye. Uh, one of the comments, like, the, uh, those who can't do teach, <laughs> was one of the most recent ones. That's that's one of the most bullshit um, phrases ever. Aye, 100%. Because for someone to be a teacher, not anybody can be a teacher. It's difficult. No. I know. That. If, if, you, if you don't really enjoy teaching, you can't do it. You can try, and you can pretend, but you won't be very good at it. Yes. So that phrase is a load of bollocks. I've, I've, I've heard it said before, it's bullshit. Yeah, 100%. Keep so, that. away from tiling, what do you do away from tiling? Uh, tile. <laughs> if, oh. if, somebody, if somebody said to me, what do you do outside of work, I'd be like, mm, I don't know, work Aye. as well. <laughs> Pretty much, I mean, life's busy and I just move to us and stuff. I try and go to the gym when I can, but it's very few and far between. <laughs> yeah. So... As well, obviously, just starting a new business with Academy, it's just, it's all go. Two businesses. Uh, do so, you separate the businesses? No, they like... so they're under the one umbrella, basically. They're under Roscoe Thailand Specialists. And how do you, so when you've got a two-week course on, you just don't take any work on that for those two weeks? No, that's all right. Yeah, that's right. Are, are you busy, in, are, are you able to do that? Is that like... Um... I'm obviously having to commit a lot more to the academy than I am my work. Usually I'm about three, four months in advance. So I've, I've, this year specifically, I've reined that right in. And I don't book as far in advance anymore. Yeah. And with regards to the academy, do you know, is that kind of predictable? So you know um, you're going to be needed. So two I will be kind of wait to the interest builds before we release a date just so we know okay. we're getting bodies on the course yeah um, initially we'll just I thought I'd do two weeks on two, two weeks training two weeks styling but as things progress I'm not going to be that strict with it it'll just like I say when the interest is there I'll release a course yeah so, but, so that big space when you're not doing the course is kind of just sitting there hi Waiting for someone to do the course. You need to get people in there. You yeah, need I... to employ somebody. <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> so you can go and do some work. I like, um, if, if it gets busier, then we'll all look to kind of take on another a lecture, a lecture. I don't know what to call myself. Fucking teacher, lecturer, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you call it? Trainer. Yeah, I, Ross is Ross. I'll employ another you Ross. Need, you definitely need somebody, mate. You can't do. You can't do that by yourself anyway. I know. I quite like the fact that I'm still really involved in tiling because it obviously keeps you up to date. I'm still learning You're going to have things. to let go of one of them. No, no way. You've got to. <laughs> no chance. I don't like, know. Unless you, unless you start employing people, it's yeah. tricky. It, it sounds difficult to me to do both those things. If, I would like to slow down you... the tiling, but I, I think it's a, it's a must that I kind of need to stay involved in fitting tiles. In order yeah, to deliver the about it. Oh, Aye. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to keep up with all the latest. I don't know because I, I, I think your academy, the, the, the way I, I think like too far into the future with yeah. things, and, and obviously whatever you think is going to happen in ten years definitely won't. But I wow. honestly think that the way you do it and the way you are, it potentially could be really big, like really big, not just. Yeah. Not just Glasgow, even. But if it, that would need you and your time, and it's got yeah. to be you as well, you wouldn't be able to. So if you you need to employ someone to do your tiling, <laughs> you need an apprentice. I so, mean, because I think your academy come honestly. It's the way you are with it, it. This is all my opinion, and I might be talking a lot of bollocks. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I personally think if you're doing it, you personally. The way that you are, it could be really big. Yeah, but, but, but you need opinion. to give it the time. 
Mm, aye, 100%. Uh, as a lot of people have said that, if you want this to go the distance, then it needs the time. So I'm trying to, I don't know, come away from being my old self. I was just a worker, go to work 14, 16 hours a day, get a job done. Whereas I'm having to completely change who I was in order to give the academy the time, which is a, a battle in itself. Um, because even when I'm no training, I'm st- I go back into work and I get caught up in it again. And then when real I should just be going doing an eight hour shift, coming home, concentrating on some academy stuff. And I don't, I go to work for three weeks and hit it hard. And then that's Monday morning shit I'm training people today. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think it's, even if, even when it, and it, and it will get big, I'm, I'm pretty convinced because of the way that you are, but even when it is, it'll still be you, it's 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 all down to you, like the way you are, yeah. I don't know you particularly well, but I can just tell by the way that you present those videos and the way that you speak about your work, you can make it huge, but it, it's all down to you, like it needs to be. I, I've definitely got a passion for it, it. but yeah. uh, trying to, I can't, I can only share my passion to other people i can't obviously make them have the same uh, yeah that was probably... but it but it, but it would rub off on them trust me there'll be some people who, who and that's why i mean it needs to be you yeah I'd... because you you can employ another teacher or whatever if you're not there it, it's not it, it's not going to be the same it's yeah. not got the same enthusiasm in the, in the same way that you you get things across yeah I'd... Yeah, I get what you're saying. But... I love it, mate. I think we've covered more or less. On it. Do, is there anybody that you think I should get onto the podcast to speak to? Like anybody? So I'm looking for anybody from any walk, as long as it's kind of related to the industry. Anybody? Who do you think? Who do you think? I don't know, I'm kind of stuck on Tyler's. I want those people from Schluter. <laughs> yeah, I do. Anyone? I want senior people from big businesses. Yeah, right. Andrew Curry, he's a training manager. Andrew Curry. I'll ask him. And yes. what, what I also want to do is at some point, I want to do a podcast with someone, like a, a masterclass. Yes. I don't know how, how much you could get it across just by talking, but someone who's who's a, an expert in a particular thing that people want to just know about. To describe it in detail. Yeah, and they can just talk people through it. Like a trade or not not the trade. Yeah. Even like one specific aspect of the trade. Yeah. Like um I don't know. Uh anti fracture mat. Mm-hmm. Why did so uh, I even now a lot of people will say, well why why do we even use it? Nice. It's even pl- now, people st- people say it. So, just someone to come on and say, right, this is what it is. This is how it's made. Uh, this this is what it's doing. Uh, this is where you use it. This uh, is where you you don't use it. Because I don't think anyone's ever actually done that. No, but that's well. You get everybody uses it now, but obviously, but I eight years ago, it was like I'm not touching that. You don't put tiles on plastic. And yeah, <laughs> but a lot of people use it now. Because they just think they've got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were say to them, what's I actually doing? Why are you using it there? I don't know. I why? can't. It's because I can't tile and plywood, so I need to use this. Yeah. Or, yeah, why, why are you using it on, on wooden floorboards? Yeah. No, well, I don't know. I just am because <laughs> it's like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help in it. Like, how? Yeah. Right. And, and I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I know. I, I don't. I'm like compared to most people who use these products I'm not, I know nothing but I just think it's good for people to listen to somebody who really knows everything there is to know about and I just use that as an example but something in particular to say this is what it is I like how it. it's made I'm expert on the field yeah exactly and then it's always there for people to listen to whenever they want to yeah oh, so there's that podcast on the cup and if I mats up Exactly. Yep. And I'll be I'll be on the other end like the idiot who doesn't know anything. <laughs> so, because, uh, and I literally am the idiot who doesn't know anything. But yeah, 
And I, I'm I'm literally want to know how, like all everything. How do you make it? Where's it made? Yeah. Who makes it? What's the production facility like? China. Everything. <laughs> well, maybe not. Well, Schler's probably Germany. I don't know. I don't know. That's assumptions. Exactly. We don't know. It's we good, isn't it? It's, yeah. We need to know. So yeah, that's great, mate. And anything you want to add? No, like you've covered. How but, how, but... how can people get in touch with you to come on your course? So, you can either get in touch with me on Instagram, uh, Roscoe Training Academy, TikTok, or... The Tartan Tyler. The Tartan Tyler. And I've got a website, which is Roscoe Training Academy as well. Yeah, Google that and you'll be pushed in the right direction. Cool. And it's open to anybody, as long as you can get there. Aye, as long as you can come to Glasgow then. But never know, in the next year, I might come to you. Yes. I love it. Thanks very much, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye.